Robert Klitzman is a professor of psychiatry and the director of the Masters of Bioethics program at Columbia University. He's joining us now via Skype from New York. Thank you very much indeed for your time, sir. I would guess that most of us who have been to the movies fairly recently would think we know what gene editing is, but I'm quite sure we probably don't. Can you give us some context to this, sir? Why would you want to manipulate genes in this way? Well, we have many genes in our body. Our genes or our DNA uh, consist of uh, three billion letters that make each of us who we are, give us our hair color, our eye color, but also predispositions to certain disease, may be involved in some complicated way with intelligence, with height, et cetera. So what gene editing, what this new technology does, is it lets you cut out part of the DNA uh, and put in a new part of the DNA. So let's say there's a bad gene that'll give you, that's gonna kill a baby. You could potentially cut out that bad gene uh, so the baby won't die. Uh, you could also use it potentially, let's say in the future we, uh, we, we're beginning to find genes associated with height, you could uh, go in and clip in uh, and put in a gene associated with height so that'll give the child more height. The problem is it's not precise enough yet. So. It's uh, sort of just ripping, it's rather than cutting precisely, the technology now uh, is sort of ripping plus or minus some genes, and so you may have so-called off-target effects, where you want to just cut out this bad gene, but you end up cutting out some good genes as well. And so scientists need more time to perfect this before we start producing kids who have genes missing from their body that we think may do one thing but may cause other harmful effects. So am I right in thinking that the concept, that the, the controversy surrounding this is not so much about the concept of gene manipulation itself, it's actually more about the regulation and actually the stage at which the technology is at the moment? Yes, that's correct. So the problem is this is very new technology. Ten years ago, no one knew that we had this ability to do this as effectively. We're just beginning to study it and understand it. And uh, we need to regulate it because, as your previous broadcaster said, uh, it's one thing to do it in an adult where I could say, I'll take the risks. But we're measuring here, what are the benefits versus what are the risks? In some cases, we can get rid of a bad disease. But in other cases, we're just enhancing something a little bit. We're going to try to give someone more height or reduce their, uh, their likelihood of getting HIV. The problem is there are risks. We could end up cutting out good genes that may be important for, uh, for intelligence or for your heart working or for your eyes working. So we don't want to be cutting out the good genes with the bad genes. So we need to perfect the technique, and therefore we don't want people, scientists, to jump ahead and start producing babies that are going to be deformed uh, because we thought that they were just getting rid of the bad genes and they got rid of some of the good genes as let, well. Let me so, ask you very briefly, and forgive me for interrupting, but unfortunately time is against us, but let me ask you briefly, sir, if I could, how do you e extend the, the control of the scientific process to scientists, uh, like Professor Hay, for example, who carried out this process really off, uh, off his own back? He did it in his own laboratory and nobody was watching. How do you, how do you try to control that? So you want to increase the norms in, among scientists that this is bad and you shouldn't be doing it now. So you want to pass a moratorium. We don't have an international, international law, per se, about this kind of thing. But you want to make it clear to scientists that this is a line you shouldn't cross. And if everyone agrees, it'll create pressure against rogue scientists from doing this. Really interesting to get your point of view on this, sir. Thank you very much indeed. We appreciate your time. Thank you. You're welcome.